Today we're going to study IOC and IOA, beginning with the definition first. Now, wherein IOC stands for Indicator of Compromise and IOA stands for Indicator of Attack. So the textbook definition for IOC would be an Indicator of Compromise is often described in the forensics world as evidence on a computer that indicates that the security of the network has been breached. So remember remember the word that IOC indicates that it's your network has already been breached. And IOA, which is an indicator of attack, on the other hand, is any digital or physical evidence that a cyber attack is likely to occur. So what it wants to say is IOA means that these are the telltale signs that an attack is under its way. To give a simple example in a timeline, imagine you have your timeline of your cyber attack. So your IOA would come first and then your IOC then cups second, which means your IOCs get detected much later. Now what differentiates the IOA and IOC? Let's look at that. For IOA, it's more proactive in its approach. So the detection of IOA, which means you have proactively or inevitably have detected an attack when it's happening. And on the other side, IOC, that is indicator of compromise, is a reactive approach, which means if you see an IOC is getting detected in your network, which means your network probably has already been compromised. Now let's study the IOA some more and what makes it an IOA. First of all, credential theft. So if in your pro proactive detection you see that have been credentials that have been stolen, that might be an indicator that an attack might be in progress. Next, credential exploitation. This is where you would see that the credentials that have been stolen are now being used to laterally move in the network. At this point of time, you might also notice a lot of brute force attempts being carried out or a lot of failed logins on a network. That's a warning sign. Lateral movement. This is a telltale sign of the previous credential exploitation. This means the, the attacker is now moving laterally, trying to exploit the credentials that it has stolen and then move to a different segment in the network. Command and control communication. This probably is the most important one because if you see that there are C2 communications taking place, which means that the intruder has already infiltrated into your network and might be trying to call home so that it can maintain persistency. And the last one that is quite obvious, data exfiltration. So if your C2 command and control communications have been established, depending on the perpetrator's motive, you might see some or maybe a lot of data being exfiltrated out of network. So what's a good prevention for data exfiltration? You might want to put DLP or a data leakage prevention control in place so that it can at least alert you when that's happening. Now, how about IOC, which is in reactive in approach? The so first telltale sign, you would see IP addresses. What does it mean? Which means the IP addresses that you have set up an alarm in your SIEM systems or malicious IPs are being observed by your IDS and IPS appliances. That's a telltale sign that you have the perpetrator has already made it through to your network and a lot of C2 communication is taking place, which means your network has been compromised. Vulnerability exploitation. This is when you will start to notice that the vulnerabilities or like the very common vulnerabilities that are found during your vulnerability scans have started to being exploited. Malware injection. This sign that if your antivirus or your EDR solution is reporting a lot of malicious behavior, that indicates that the perpetrator has compromised into your network and your antivirus detection mechanism, whether it be in host-based or network-based, has now detected them and trying to block them. Cyber threat indicators. So you might want to populate your detection mechanism that detects for hash values, proxy URLs, or malicious IP addresses to detect for cyber threat signatures. You can even use your IDS and IPS appliances to detect the IOCs. Next and the last one, static. 
which is of course the a nature of IOC because IOCs tend to be pretty static in nature, which means it's just a list populated on a watch list or an active list which your systems are comparing it against to detect for malicious anomaly activities. Now you must be thinking at this point of time, which one's better? Indicator of compromise or indicator of attack? Which one should you rely on? Since there's no clear answer to this, it's always recommended to have proper controls placed so that you can detect both IOAs and IOCs. Now, how about IOCs? It does have a few limitations. Let's go through three of them. First, IOC detection compares potential threats to a database of known attack signatures. As we discussed before, it only checks the hash values, IP addresses, and proxy URLs against a compared or a populated list. Second, IOC-based security solutions Solutions often are predictable scanning schedules. This again relates back to the very nature of IOC that it's very predictable to catch what's already there in, the, in your watch list or your populated list. Finally, I'm just going to read it through. It's pretty self-explanatory that since indicator of compromise provide reactive threat detection, they often fail to provide prevention against intrusion from occurring at the first place all right now i'd also recommend that you check out this video which is zero day exploit i explain in detail how a zero day works and hopefully this one should give you more idea okay so this was a brief introduction and the differences between iocs and ioa Hope this was helpful. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to know more or want me to make more videos on similar content. Also, if you need any cybersecurity layered consultation, I'll leave my email at the link below so that you can connect with me if you've got any questions. All right, everybody, thank you for watching the video. I hope you gained some more knowledge on cybersecurity. And of course, please do share this video with your family and friends whom you think would benefit from this video. Okay? And and thank you all for tuning in to AV Cyberactive. Hope you all have a lovely day ahead. Bye now.